What I'm about to show you is a clip from an unreleased interview with the CEO of Swan Bitcoin, Corey Clipston. Corey gets unbelievably real with us in this interview, and I'm going to play you a clip, and you will be the first to see this. I'll be releasing the full interview very soon, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel. You don't want to miss it. Let me set up this clip so you understand what you're about to see and you understand what you're about to hear. Corey is about to disprove Bitcoin's stock-to-flow theory. Stock-to-flow is an idea that spread like wildfire over the past couple years in the Bitcoin space. Theory popularized by the pseudonymous Twitter personality Plan B, 100 trillion USD himself. See, I remember first hearing about Bitcoin stock-to-flow as either in 2018 or early 2019, and I was impressed. Plan B described how stock-to-flow is a model that can be used on gold, silver, basically any commodity that is a known supply and a supply flow, and it accurately predicts future prices. And because Bitcoin's current supply is always 100% verifiable and its future supply flow is 100% known, using stock to flow on Bitcoin has revealed unbelievably bullish future prices. Or so we thought. See, Corey loves Bitcoin, but he hates false narratives. Corey received his MBA in finance and entrepreneurship from the University of Chicago. He's now the CEO of two Bitcoin businesses, and he's here to enlighten us as to the truth regarding stock to flow. I'm just about to play you this clip. Real quick, quick plug for Corey's business. I like to recommend good products, good services. Swan Bitcoin is without a doubt the easiest and most affordable way to accumulate Bitcoin with automatic recurring purchases. I like it and I use it. And I use it because it has without a doubt, the lowest fees out there. Swan Bitcoin has the lowest fees for reoccurring buys in the US. They do not charge withdrawal fees. Depending on the size of your plan, your fees will be 23% to 80% cheaper at Swan than if you bought Bitcoin on any other platform. Way better than Coinbase, way better than Cash App. I recently joined the Swan Force. If you use the link below, you can start cost averaging Bitcoin. Aaron T. Arnold, the best savings vehicle of all time, $10 bonus if you use the link below without further ado. How much credence do you personally give to Bitcoin's stock to flow model? Oh, uh, I mean, listen, I, I've been very public uh, going back about a year now. I think it was probably not quite a year. I think it was probably December that I started to really point out that it was actually statistically invalid. Um, so, yeah, and, I've, and why? I've been very clear about that. Uh, basically, the supply of Bitcoin is known, which means that stock to flow as a variable in a correlation model is, is what's considered uh, non-random. It's, it's, uh, it's a static variable. You, you know exactly what the supply schedule is, statistically speaking. It may vary a tiny bit, you know, block by block or, you know, week by week or whatever. But essentially, the supply schedule, the emission schedule to get to 21 million is totally known. Uh, you can't actually run a correlation on a non-random variable and a random variable like price. So that's statistically speaking, it's, it's an invalid model. Both of them, the S2F model and the S2FX model are completely invalid and frankly just laughed at by real mathematicians and statisticians. Really? <laughs> so, well, so they're just, actually they're just pretty price charts that show historical data with a, with a, with line a rainbow. Here. But you can literally fit, you know, any of a thousand lines to that. And frankly, if you were going to fit a line, you know, on a log chart, it would be, you know, probably more like, a, you know, an S curve or something like that. Eventually, price would go like this. If, you know, there's so many different ways that you can fit a line. And I always heard, and please educate me, but because it was, if we know exactly the amount of supply for Bitcoin, since they use this chart as, as with many charts with gold and silver and stuff, that made it a better uh, chart for an asset like Bitcoin? Uh, so you can't, you, you can't use stock to flow as a variable for any asset in a correlation model. Uh, uh, so, so it doesn't, doesn't even work. work in it doesn't work for gold at all. I see. Yeah. So it's completely invalid. If you look at the price of gold, you know, it's varied from, you know, 60 billion to, you know, 10 trillion market cap or whatever over the last 115 years. And stock to flow has been the same the whole time. You know, it's all over the place and stock to flow has just been the same. What don't, um, I'm blanking on names, but Preston, Pish, Pr Prish, Prish uh, yeah, what don't those guys, I totally respect them and their knowledge of macroeconomic yeah. factors and stuff. They yeah. seem to be generally, they've, they've shared that chart on Twitter. Yeah. What, what don't they understand? I mean, a lot of people have. I think, I think there's some social signaling going on there. Like the guy talks a good game and, you know, it appears to be credible or whatever. And, 
you know, and it's fun. It's hopium, right? Like it's, it's nice. Everybody wants to see number go up. Uh, and not everybody digs into statistical models and not everybody actually has, you know, a fundamental understanding of that. I had to go dust off a lot of old knowledge. You know, I did a lot of upper level stats at University of Chicago, but it was, you know, 17 years ago or whatever <laughs> in grad school. Um, so I had to dust it off a little bit and hit up some friends. And there's a lot of people that have actually already completely destroyed this. And you can actually find out in about five minutes just looking at co-integration on Wikipedia you know, if, if you want, just look up co-integration on Wikipedia and the first paragraph takes care of it. Um, the other handle I would say is, uh, you know, just look up S2F and Kruger macro. Alex, Alex uh, Kruger is a really, really smart mathematician and trader and has, you know, taken care of this many times. Another one is uh, Strix Leviathan. So S-T-R-I-X Leviathan, L-E-V-I-A-T-H-A-N. So just search for Strix Leviathan and S2F and check out some of the work that he's done. Um, he also had the good, um, the good chart showing that S2F uh, has nothing to do with gold price either. Hmm. Um, so obviously, if S2F is not predictive for gold price, it doesn't make any sense to do a cross-asset model that's trying to place gold on a line because it's totally cherry-picked. You know, you could cherry-pick gold in 2020, but if you took gold versus S2F and put it on a chart in the year 2000, it would be 80% lower because gold was like 360 bucks. Right. Well, thank you for educating us on that because I thought it worked for gold. I never back tested it, but I'll yeah, sure it, it doesn't work for gold, real estate, copper, lumber, none of that. You cannot chart a static variable, a non-random variable, which stock to flow for every asset basically is like you kind of know what it is. You can't use that to predict an independent random variable. Well, it was nice while it lasted. You know, we'll have to rally behind something else. Listen, it's still, listen, first of all, they are beautiful charts. People need some hopium. It's fine. It's brought a lot of people in. I mean, as you noted, like a lot of macro people kind of got their head turned by that. A lot of them have been distancing themselves from it recently because, you know, the nail was put in the coffin of the first one when it was proven not to have co-integration uh, in probably February or March or something like that. And so the guy kind of walked away from that, but then uh, came out with another model, but it's actually no better and probably worse because <laughs> just the cross asset model makes no sense. Um, but that's okay. Hey, the fact you that can, everybody's getting You can hit my buried. Twitter if you want to scroll back through and, and look at oh, all of this Oh, believe me, we did. Believe me, we did. <laughs> um, but uh, hey, now that everybody's getting bearish on stock to flow, it makes me bullish on Bitcoin. Good. Exactly. Well, I think that's what it really comes down to. You know, I think, um, I think it's really important to understand Bitcoin deeply and to not fall for false narratives. Uh, I think we've gotten the whole space just wrecked by thinking that it needed all this extra functionality, which forked a whole bunch of people off into like thinking that, you know, high, you know, tons of transaction throughput was important for money. It's clearly not. You have layer one, two, three, whatever. Like it's just in centralized companies, just keeping Bitcoin ledgers in their own damn spreadsheet is going to make Bitcoin scale just fine. It's no big deal. Uh, so that's like one false narrative, you know, a false narrative around big blocks that Bitcoin needs to be for payments on the base layer totally false narrative, you know? So I think it's, it's really important that you identify what's for sure real and then things that you think are, you know, an open question and then, you know, actually identify things that are just straight up false or invalid and don't get suckered in by it because it just, it wrecks your mental model of thinking about how to make decisions. We have no idea, truly no idea what's going to happen with Bitcoin price in the future. It's a market, it's priced in basically. I mean, so what we're trying to do, and this is, you know, you, you see the, I recently repenned my tweet from last December to the top of my profile, Twitter, Corey Clipston, you know, it's really just a supply demand chart, but the supply is obviously vertical because we know exactly what the fully diluted supply of Bitcoin is. As Michael Saylor keeps saying, like I make my decision on trying to get the most of 21 million. When I look at like my own Bitcoin stack, I'm dividing by 21 million too. I've never once looked at Clark Moody's dashboard and gone like my tiny little stack divided by 18.74. Why would I do that? No, it's 21 million. Um, so we know that it's asymptotic. It's, it's just a vertical line of supply. And our whole goal is to just shift the demand curve out. And if you keep on shifting the demand curve out then the, the price where it meets supply is, uh, is higher up on that chart. So like more adoption, more people got like 1%. Let's go get the other 99%. More people buying more Bitcoin, more people storing more in the protocol, more companies using it as a treasury asset, more governments thinking about taking it onto their balance sheet, more people stacking daily. We're launching daily. <laughs> 
This I is what I, this is what I think for as far as the perception shift that's going to happen with people who aren't into Bitcoin coming into Bitcoin that they for them to realize as you as your website says Bitcoin is the best savings vehicle of all time. A lot of you know no, new people come in and they're like, well, okay, prove that to me. I think in order to have them shift their perception, the fact that Bitcoin is over a decade old is obviously great, and the fact that Bitcoin is maintaining a price of over ten thousand dollars is great. I mean, I really think all we need is, is time. Similarly to how in 1995, you know, the famous clip of Katie Couric, a lot of people weren't sure that the internet would be part of their future lives. Cut to 10 years later in 2005, you know, it had been around so much, everybody just accepted, oh, the internet is here to stay and it's gonna help our lives. I would think in the next 10 years, this massive perception shift is going to happen. I 100% agree with you. I think that's exactly what's going on. Uh, it's just, you know, it's just, it's seeping into pop culture in a big, big way.